Hello again, minions. Wheezy here, and this week on the wrap up, we are going to go over what I posted to the channel this week, but we're also going to discuss a little bit of game stonks. So stick around. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, first, I'm going to share with you uh, what posted to the channel this week. Uh, and then kind of what's in the works going forward. And then we're gonna jump into talking a little bit about something that happened this week that's tangentially related to video games, which is Game Stonk. <laughs> so first, uh, this week on the channel, uh, I cut together all of my Call of Duty Cold War campaign videos that were the cinematic gameplays, and I built one long Call of Duty Cold War campaign cinematic gameplay movie. It's like three hours, 44 minutes, and uh, if you're interested in the Cold War campaign story and just kind of want to see what it was about, kind of watch it like a movie, that's there for you. I uh, This is part of what I wanted to do uh, when I started doing story time is after I played Last of Us Part Two, I, was, I finished it and I was like, man, I really wish I had recorded that story so that I could cut it together like a movie if I want to go back and rewatch the storyline of it, right? And this got me thinking about old games that I also enjoyed that had a great story that I got into like Bioshock and, st and Uncharted games, just these games that really do have a good narrative, unlike Cold War, which isn't a bad narrative, but it's also kind of just shoot everyone in the face. Um, but anyway, that's up on the channel, so I'll show you guys a quick little clip from that to give you an idea of what you're going to be seeing there. There's nothing here. This can't be the right place. We ain't seeing anything on our side either. It's him. Fucking lied to us. That true, Bell? You pull us out to the middle of nowhere rushes so Perseus can detonate those nukes? All right, so check that out if you want. Uh, also, check out the playlists uh, for my story time for Cold War. It's There's not a ton of them, and especially the episode titled Can You Believe It? It, there was a, some, one of my favorite moments of any of my videos is in there um, where I tomahawk one of the heavies in the head. But uh, yeah, just if you guys haven't checked out some of those uh, story time videos, I know that they can be a little bit daunting because they're pretty long and they're uncut and that's just to save me editing time. Um, but I think they're worth a look. And also as we go forward, uh, just leveraging my own time I mean, part of what I'm doing right now is because I want to get content out and I want it to be expedient because I have full-time job, kids, relationship, things I gotta, things I gotta tend to uh, when I'm not. And video games are still my recreation time, so I've tried to build this channel around not turning my recreation time into a job, and helping, hopefully, you guys also be able to enjoy your recreation time more. So, but all of that said, a big part of my vision, what I haven't lost about Weezy's Gaming. It started about playing games with friends, and at its heart, it is still about a community of normal people who enjoy playing games that want to hang out and have a good time. Uh, not intended to be the league of elite gamers. <laughs> so uh, just a bunch of bunch of nerds hanging out wanting to learn how to get better at video games. So um, anyway, enough of the tangent on that. The only other thing that I got posted, I posted to the communities, it's unlisted, is the next episode of Jedi Fallen Order, episode 17. Uh, I did actually finish Jedi Fallen Order this week, so there's going to be total 18 episodes of that, and then I will cut that together into a full cinematic. Uh, but here is a clip from episode 17 of Jedi Fallen Order. <laughs> That's a lot of grunting. Yeah, seriously. Did she have to tell you that? Hadouken! Okay, so that is content that I got posted this week. At the same time, I also currently am looking at it. I have Valhalla episodes 17 and 18 already uploaded. I just need to create thumbnails and get them posted. Same thing with Fallen Order episode 18. It's already up there. I just haven't gotten around to getting a thumbnail for it and getting it uh, shared out. So that'll be the last episode of the game. Which was, man, it ended up, Jedi Fallen Order ended up being, um, even though the gameplay loop 
was a little repetitive at times and there was a lot of strange level design and backtracking and stuff like that. Putting that aside, the story itself, once it kind of got rolling, um, and then I'm looking forward to putting it all together into one story time, one large story time episode, because the story itself is, was really enjoyable, especially the kind of conclusion of it. So look forward to that. Um, I've also been working uh, on a uh, on a produce Cold War video that is uh, why Cold War sucks. Um, <laughs> I've, I've put together clips, not necessarily even through a lot of effort, just uh, playing the game. I have managed to collect a lot of clips about getting killed around corners, bullshit sniper shots, like disconnects and UI bugs, just all kinds of stuff that just kind of makes Cold War not a great game. Um, so that's something that I'm going to continue uh, exploring in, in addition to like produce content and is just kind of the experience of games um, and hopefully in a way that's still entertaining and even informative for you guys. One of the, one of the opportunities in Cold War, um, since I am still playing it, uh, and I do go back and forth between Modern Warfare and Cold War, is that you kind of need to seek out ways to enjoy the game. Overall, the game kind of sucks. <laughs> But there are things you can do in, that are enjoyable. So I'm trying to help find stuff to bring to you guys uh, to help you enjoy it more. That's the basis of like my free-for-all videos, uh, how to do well in free-for-all, um, because that is one of the most enjoyable game modes in Cold, in Cold War, surprisingly. But uh, I'm going to keep going forward with that. But at the same time, hopefully something entertaining where we get to kind of get together and bitch about the things that suck. Um, that said, uh, in addition to another thing I'll talk about before I move forward, I did finalize my uh, video outline, uh, essentially my script, for the map movement episode of my reboot of Wheezy's War College, so I am looking forward to getting that produced. That said, I'm, um, I have a lot of gameplay built up, especially from like Modern Warfare and uh, Cold War, because those are the games I've been playing more recently, and there has been a bit of a drought <laughs> in shooters. Uh, for me personally over the last little bit because I wasn't huge into Battlefield 5 or Battlefield 1. I really missed the Battlefield 4 days. But back in the Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 days, I don't necessarily have, as a matter of fact, I don't have any of that footage hanging around anymore other than the actual videos that I uploaded to YouTube. I didn't have my 18 terabyte storage array that I have now. So now I can capture, organize, and keep gameplay clips which will be really useful in building out Wheezy's War College. That said, right now my library consists almost entirely of Modern Warfare and Cold War, which isn't a bad thing and that's what I'm going to probably start producing, reproducing the, the, the reboot of that series with. Um, but I want more games to come out. I want a new Battlefield game. I want new modern shooters that I can play and include in that. So suggestions for you guys would be great um i know there's some stuff on on pc right now that's in like early access and stuff like that um at the same time i also have to make sure that i'm playing stuff that i enjoy and i just the world war one world war two time frame even in cold war even the near past isn't quite as motivating for me i'm a very much love the modern modern stuff i mean i'm surrounded by technology i'm a, I'm a software guy I'm a, I'm a technology nerd i'm not exactly analog um so if you guys have suggestions for shooters or games uh, to, to put into that pipeline, I have, I, I am willing to and probably will go back to those old games and even recapture gameplay in Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, or Hardline, who knows. Um, but that is in the works. That is in the works. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at, where, what's been going on. Um, uh, there's this kind of meta thing going through YouTube right now uh, because of something the Spiffing Brit posted uh i think he gets all the credit for it i haven't seen anyone before him talk about this that the community posts on youtube are kind of broken so you'll see a lot of your content your favorite content creators uh on youtube pimping out uh lots of polls in the community feed section and without getting too much detail on that it's because the way that youtube is trying to promote community posts it's making it ridiculously easy for people putting up polls to get a disproportionately large amount of attention to those and it's an it's a way for them to kind of like drive up attention and subscribers um, even though it's kind of a, a weird quirk in the system right now um, fundamentally people that are gaining a lot of subscribers it's because they're entertaining and people are finding out about them for the first time so I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing but if you've noticed a lot of polls out there that's why I posted a poll for this a similar reason where it's like not just 
to get the attention, but every you know, oh, this is a thing now. Um, and while not getting a lot of engagement, it, it was just enough engagement for a couple of you that participated to say, hey, we really like when you play, when you commentate your shooter gameplay. Like most of you, right? That's what you came here for, um, which is good for me to, to know, hey, this is, as I keep con continuing to create produced content and stuff like that, um, that I need to keep that steady stream of, of gameplay commentary coming. So um, it's something I've actually been enjoying doing, and it's also in that category of stuff that's easy for me to produce. I pull my microphone up, um, and I play a game while I talk out loud doing it. Typically, if I'm playing a shooter, I'll just sit and play. You guys probably see me some during the streams, right? This is really simple to just share my thoughts on something or complain or just be my usual loquacious run mouth insert foot self. Um, so expect to see more of that coming forward directly from feedback from you guys. So thank you for that. Of course, as always in these update videos, give me all your give me all your feedback, all your thoughts. What are you guys playing? What do you guys want to do? All that stuff. Okay. As we just click over ten minutes, let's move into um, let's talk briefly about Game Stonks just because I want to bring it up. I want to say Game Stonks because it's GameStop and stocks and Reddit memes and stonks. If you've been living under a rock, you may not know about what's going on at GameStop, and I'm not going to bore you with a big in-depth uh, discussion of it unless there's like huge demand in this video. If you guys comment and say, I want you to explain GameStonk to me, because um, I've done a lot, you know, I understand it, I understand all that's going, and it fits very well in what I've spent a lot of time over the last several years looking into, which is the silver markets, and specifically physical silver. Um, and all of this actually fits together quite nicely. So the nerdy part of me, part of why I've been distracted with other things this week in addition to uh, more more work time, busy work time, um, is I, this is this is a significant event and it's going to potentially, not necessarily, but potentially, and I think likely, going to be an inciting event for something very, um, that has been inevitable for a while in the markets and is about to start really kicking off. Uh, I think it's going to start an avalanche of bad. I've, um, I have anticipated as bad as 2020 was, 2021 is going to be when the shit really hits the fan. And um, I'm not being pessimistic about it. Uh, maybe I'll talk about it more here. I know I talk about it with, you know, people who are more interested in nerdy stuff. It's not part of my gaming channel. Um, but there are opportunities. There's good, there's good stuff coming for those who are aware and prepared. Um, so that said, with the talking around it, there's a huge short squeeze going on with GameStop stock right now, and uh, hedge funds that shorted it have huge short positions to the point where there's like 130% of all of the shares of GameStop are owed back to a, a, a loaner, a, uh, an, an institution or brokers that have loaned them those stocks because these hedge funds expected the price to tank, and so they were going to get a deal. You borrow stocks at a high price, you sell them on the market at that price, and then when the price goes down, you buy those same stocks back for less, you give them back to the original owner, and you pocket the rest. Well, that's a contractual obligation. You owe the original owner their stocks back. And so if you sell those stocks and the price goes up, you still have to buy them back to give them back to the original owner because they're not yours. This is what's happening right now, <laughs> and and some savvy investors uh, on Reddit um, discovered this, uh, and well, anyway, I won't get too much into the detail of it. Point being, it has become a, it has become the meme where where groups of essentially hobby investors have driven up the price of the stock so much and captured so much of the market that the short positions can't buy enough stocks to cover their position. And what's interesting about that is 130% of all shares have been shorted, right? And there's a lot of investors holding shares now who are keeping them and refusing to sell them because they have discovered that these hedge funds are doing this. And now on a lot of levels, it's a principal thing. And so I'm so these short positions, they literally can't cover their shorts because no one is selling enough shares for them to do it. And the way that that works is you have to keep offering someone more and more until they're willing to give it up. This is how this is how a market works. If if I own something, like if I have this, um, I have this little thing that I like, this silver. 
perhaps. And to me, it's worth, you know, more than the silver itself. If this, if if people, if the market at large kind of thinks, oh, well, this was only worth fifty dollars, and I think it should be worth less, and it gets to the point where everyone's trying to buy this, and you can't find it anywhere. This is what happened with PS Five. That's a better example. I have this PS Five. I could turn around and sell it right now, probably for as much or more than I paid for it, just because the stock is still real low. You can't buy one of these if you want to. So even though it only costs $500, good luck finding one for that, right? I mean, you can now. I think stock is starting to come back. That's not the point. During the launch window, I managed to get one from Sony Direct at cost. A lot of people got them at cost, and they turned around and flipped them for a profit. Because when something is limited in supply, you have to pay more to get it. GameStop stock is in short supply and there are some very leveraged people who need to buy that stock because they owe it to someone else and the longer people refuse to scalp their consoles refuse to scalp their GameStop stock the more expensive it becomes to the point where eventually these hedge funds have to because they're paying penalties they're paying interest to the people they borrowed the stocks from Eventually, it becomes so expensive to not give them back. They just have to suck it up, and they have to buy those stocks at whatever price they're going to be. And if it gets to the point where they have to buy them and the price won't come down because everybody's diamond hands hodling, right? Um, although hodl is Bitcoin. Uh, we'll talk about cryptos a different time. Because everyone is holding their GameStop stock, their GameStonk. That price is going to go to the moon. And the interesting thing about that is if that holds and these a lot of these hedge funds and banks behind them have to cover those shorts at high prices, then what they're going to have to do is liquidate their good stock. So if they're invested in Apple and Microsoft and Google, um, which is ABC, then or Alphabet, not ABC. <laughs> ABC is the TV network. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't like big corporations. <laughs> Alphabet. Um, then they have to liquidate their valuable stocks, sell them in order to buy the GameStop stocks. And when a large quantity of a stock is sold, what happens is that increases the supply available on the market and the price drops. So potentially a lot of, and this isn't necessarily limited to GameStop. Um, so without going too much more down this rabbit hole, the long story short and what I see potentially coming is as these short positions are continually exploited and as people in this information age are able to put pressure on these big manipulated markets behind these big banks and organizations, it could force a situation where, where driving these shorts and, and squeezing these short positions can force these bigger investment firms to have to sell the successful stocks in order to cover those positions, which leads to a progressive crash of the entire market. And we can talk about all kinds of more stuff like that. I've already been babbling about this for five minutes, but needless to say, this is more than just Reddit memes. This is potentially an inciting event for something really major. Uh, in global markets really not even just the u.s and not just for GameStop. so um we'll see where that all turns out but it's been very interesting for sure and um it's always nice when you know the zeitgeist touches a little bit on gamers even though it's GameStop, which i am have been and still am a huge hater of <laughs> they are they have had you know uh essentially predatory practices against gamers for a long time, which I understand is a business model. Like they have to, they're a retail and retail is dying. That's why all of these hedge funds shorted GameStop is because retail is dying, right? People are ordering things online. I gave up on GameStop years ago. The savvy investor saw GameStop stock falling. And um, anyway, a couple of big investors saw the opportunity for GameStop to transition into doing more digital stuff and catching up with the world we live in today. And these investors recognized that GameStop, despite being hated and people recognizing that retail is dying, GameStop itself still has the ability, especially with investment, to transition to the modern world. And so therefore it was fundamentally undervalued as a stock. And this perfect storm has been created where it's not just fuck the hedge funds, it's that GameStop fundamentally still has value and it was extremely undervalued. So the market provides, here we are. It's going to be a roller coaster. We are just now hitting the end of January 2021, and it is off to quite a start. So you guys need to hang around here. We're going to chill. We're going to play some video games, but uh, we're also going to talk about stuff that's important as it goes. So we're going to be a community. You guys are my minions. 
and we're all we're all together in this and uh, it's gonna be good for us so we will talk to you guys later again feedback all that stuff goodbye minions <laughs>